Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another EP of the series. We recap the day of baseball. Today is October 28th, and the Dodgers are up 3-0 in a commanding series lead over the New York Yankees. The series is over. Ladies and gentlemen, the series is over. And hopefully, I'm actually, hopefully I'm in a montage where the Yankees have the most legendary 3-0 comeback of all time, because of course I'm a Yankees fan. But uh, we are a, a channel that covers the MLB. Um, and and let's recap and talk about what happened in this game. Four nothing Dodgers win. Four two, sorry, four two Dodgers win, um, and almost a, a shutout for the Dodgers in the World Series. So uh, we had Walker Buehler and Clark Schmidt go off. Walker Buehler pitched a hell of a game. Really, really was impressive. His final stat line: Buehler five innings, two hits, five strikeouts. I loved what I saw from Buehler. The cutter was working well today. Um, the fastball also was jumping at times 96 miles an hour. Walker Bueller at his best eight. We're pumping 98, 99. That fastball had that same sort of jump that it did 2020, uh, 2021 when he was in Sire and discussions. Uh, really impressive start built off of what he showed against the New York Mets in game six of that series. Um, and in the top of the first inning, uh, let's start off in this uh, Clark Schmidt first inning. Uh, Shohei Otani is going to work a, a four pitch walk Schmidt non-competitive pitches, not the way you want to start off the game versus Shohei Otani. This is why this top three, it's this top four. Uh, it's it's the best top four that we've we've seen in a long time, just with how dangerous it is. And it really showed against Clark Schmidt, who of course is a good pitcher, but he's not the type of pitcher that, hey, I'm going to pound in strikes and you can't hit me like Garrett Cole, like Carlos Rodon at his best. I don't have that sort of stuff, even though he has a good knuckle curveball. Uh, if I give you a cutter, uh, up and inside, Freddie Freeman, I'm going to hit that ball out. And, and this this Dodgers lineup, again, it's just, it's just what makes it so dangerous. And you can see it against the level of pitcher that Clark Schmidt is. So Mookie Betts, following that four-pitch walk, uh, is going to look in between with his swing. I didn't really love what I saw in that at-bat. You could tell he was uh, 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 like awkward there. I think there was a sweeper, and you could tell it was like a check swing foul ball. It, it was it was in between on the on the cutter, on the sweeper, on the knuckle curveball, not really seeing the ball. Well, and I've seen those types of at-bats from Mookie Betts, but he's continually um, gotten hits consistently uh, throughout this postseason run. He's batting 291 and 976 OPS uh, in this uh, playoffs, I think, or that might be the World Series. Uh, those those numbers for Mookie. But um, following that, Freddie Freeman is going to pull a fastball into the right field stands uh, to make this a 2 nothing game. Set the tone early. Yankee Stadium was into it. I was listening to John Sterling, of course, this being his last series of his entire career. And uh, the, he was he was saying in his entire career, this is like one of the most electric crowds that he's seen. Like the Yankee Stadium is bumping. And Freddie Freeman to come in there, it wasn't the first pitch cutter. I, well, I don't think it was a first. It was not a first pitch cutter, but um, inside Freddie Freeman, what a swing! Set the tone, two nothing. Let's go, let's ride. Freddie Freeman, an incredible postseason hitter, and we've seen it on display. Um, and then following that, uh, there, there, uh, in, in the at bat against uh, Max Muncy, uh, there were I think two sweepers that he uh, got the swing and miss on. Uh, some good sweepers following the the home run. So now two nothing game. A we we got we got nine innings. It's okay. We got out of that inning without allowing more runs because early on, I mentioned it in the preview uh, on TikTok, YouTube Shorts. Uh, Clark Schmidt, I, I'm like, hey, if any base runners get on, hey, go to the bullpen immediately. I mean, this is a must win game for the New York Yankees. Uh, so he's able to get out of that, and not allow more base runners. We take it to the bottom of the first inning. Glaber Torres lead off walk. Let's go. That was a good at bat. I don't even know if Glaber Torres swung. I mean, Glaber Torres in the first inning. Uh, someone told me it's like an 800 on base percentage in the first inning leading off the game. It has been absolutely unbelievable to see what Glaber Torres has done in the leadoff spot. He's had such good at-bats. We're going to talk about that at-bat later on uh, in the eighth inning. That was uh, a good at-bat by Glaber Torres, but of course, a uh, tough call. So after that, Juan Soto in the two-hole dynamic duo of Torres and Soto, he's going to drive one into left field. Teoscar Hernandez is going to go back on it. And make the play. That ball was ripped really, really hard. I thought initially that ball was going to get over the head. See, Oscar Hernandez kind of casually go back, goes back on it. Now it like jumps up. It was a difficult play. Uh, he made it difficult as he really, again, wasn't hustling too, too hard to the ball. But he's able to make that play around 100, 105 off the bat. A cutter outside, I think it was. And, and Soto really, I mean, he took the knuckle curveball, um, uh, the, the, the slider from Bueller. And he was able to get that cutter outside. I mean, Soto is just such consistently great at bats. It's really been Torres and Soto are the only two guys in this Yankees lineup that have 
actually put up consistently really great at bats, full at bats. This Dodgers lineup, it, there were so many three two counts in this game. The Yankees lineup does not do that. This is one of the best lineups that we've seen. It really is one of the best lineups that we've seen in this Dodgers lineup. So after that, Aaron Judge up to the plate. Uh, he's going to have really two incredible takes on curveballs. Aaron Judge, of course, has been terrible in, the, in this World Series. I, I mean, after those two takes, I'm like, there was one take. Uh, the first take was, like, not really competitive pitch. I think it was a two-strike curveball. You could see Judge, yes, 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 no. I'm like, let's go. Judge, you're locked in. That's a really great take on a curveball. Then he's going to go 94 upstairs. Hey, let's foul that pitch off. Good swing. Foul it right back to the screen. Count remains at um, uh, two strikes. Then it moves to three and two. I'm sorry, three and two. Uh, the count remains at full count. And, and he's going to chase on a really well-located cutter. That was a very good pitch. And the cutter was a massive pitch for Walker Buehler in this game. And a 3-2 cutter outside. That really, like, ah, ah, Soto good at me. I mean, Flavor Torres, great walk. Soto drives it. It's caught. Aaron Judge, good at that. And then a really great cutter outside. Looks like a fastball. Just has that end of the, end of the um, pitch uh, cut to it. I mean, the cutter is really such an equalizer as a pitch. As a hitter, you're like fastball, um, a breaking pitch. And then that cutter, just that in-between pitch where you think that's a fastball, and it has that breaking pitch side movement. And Walker Buehler had that pitch really commanded well today. Um, and then following that, Giancarlo Stan is going to hit a hard ground ball to shortstop. Tommy Edmonds is going to be right there, though. Flips it to second base with Gavin Lux. So no rally for the Yankees in the first inning. Still 2 nothing. We take it to the second inning. And both Clark Schmidt and Walker Buehler, really great innings. Two strikeouts for both of them in those innings. Again, Clark Schmidt, knuckle curve ball sweeper. That's all we're throwing after that home run. Knuckle curve sweeper. We're not throwing the cutter. Outside to Kike Hernandez where two strikes, it was breaking ball, breaking ball. We go way upstairs, up and inside, and get the chase uh, from Kike to get that strikeout. Walker Buehler, two strikeouts in that inning. And, and something that I noted <clears throat> in, in the third inning, was Clark Schmidt felt scared to throw strikes. Again, this is what <clears throat> this type of lineup can do to a guy like Clark Schmidt. But Clark Schmidt, you could tell, didn't trust his stuff. It was similar to, I, I don't know why I'm comparing to Jose Quintana, but Jose Quintana in, in the Brewers game, uh, of course his stuff is not great. And and there were so many moments where Quintana jumped ahead and, and he's going to throw three straight balls of change up, blown away, change up, blown away, curveball low. I'm not going to give you a strike because Jose Quintana, of course, does not have great stuff. And he doesn't think that if I throw a pitch in the strike zone, I'm going to pound the strike zone. They are going to hit me. I have to get them to expand the zone. I have to be deceptive. That's what it felt like for Clark Schmidt. And the Dodgers lineup was taking. Clark Schmidt ended up having four walks. And in uh, the... For on the third inning, they ended up uh, putting in Mark Leiter Jr. There was a jam shot single into right field, I think from Tommy Edmond, that ended up scoring, uh, I think, Gavin Lux in that inning. And Mark Leiter Jr. ends up getting a big at-bat at Will Smith. I think it was bases loaded, 3-2. Again, the Dodgers just working great at-bats. And uh, I think it was a, a splitter, and it was a jam shot right back to Leiter. He's able to go in that catcher stance, get the ball, toss it over to first base, and get out of it. So it's still a 3 nothing game at this point. Big out from Mark Leiter Jr. And we are going to see a leadoff walk to Gavin Lux. And then Kike Hernandez following that is going to rip a single into right field. After this, I'm like, Mark Leiter Jr., you got to go. This is the type of – managing where you any any sort of hard contact mark legend you're we're, we're bringing in our high leverage on clay holmes tommy canely jake cousins anyone to face this lineup especially with uh tommy edmund who has been very very hot uh, as of late of course so first and third i think one out at this point and tommy edmund is gonna bunt right back to mark Leiter jr first and third uh with less than two outs that is such a perfect play. It really is going to put a lot of pressure on the defense. But Mark Leiter Jr. is going to be able to get that button. That's really the only play that the Yankees are going to have a chance on. If Mark Leiter Jr. gets it. Third baseman, Jazz Chisholm, you're going to have no chance probably at any base. Anthony Rizzo was holding on the runner at first base. He has no chance to get this ball. It's Mark Leiter Jr.'s play. He gets it. He underhands it home. And a really close play at home plate. The Dodgers end up challenging it, but the call stands as an out, a really massive out for Mark Leiter Jr. 
And then the Yankees with the top of the lineup coming back up, still with first and second. Uh, I, I don't know if it was two. Of, I think actually there was one. I think there was first and third, no outs. I'm pretty sure. And, and Nestor Cortez comes back in this game to face Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, and Freddie Freeman. And Nestor Cortez is able to get out of this. Some good fastballs low and cutters low to strike out Shohei Otani in that third inning. So the Dodgers, a lot of base runners, a lot of long at bats. They only score three runs, though. It's a three nothing ball game. Even though it's felt like the Dodgers, man, they're in full control, six to nothing. It really felt like a, a massive, massive lead for the Dodgers. But still, three nothing Yankees are still in this ball game. Fourth inning leads off with Aaron Judge first pitch, crushing off the end of the bat. This ball immediately, I thought this ball was gone. John Sterling thought it was gone. The Yankees crowds thought it was gone. It was such a clean, like Aaron Judge just got this pitch, middle middle curveball from Bueller. And he got it off the end of that. Teoscar Hernandez, immediately they cut to him. The, the, the cameraman, like, had that home run type of angle. And Teoscar Hernandez just standing there like, oh, my God, he absolutely walloped that baseball. But he just stands there and does not have to move and makes a play. Um, very shocking um, to, to react to. And then following that, Giancarlo saying, hey, hustle double. Uh, rips a, a cutter, I think, again, outside. Um, off the end of that, but we know Giancarlo Sands' power. It's not going to get to the wall, but um, Teoscar Hernandez is going to fire it in, and Giancarlo Sand was moving, and he's going to slot into second base for a one-out double. Giancarlo Sand continues to say hi. He was two for four in this game. Anthony Volpe uh, is going to single into left field. Good at bat. Volpe's been really struggling this postseason. Off the end of that, I think, again, a cutter uh, into left field. And Giancarlo Stan is going to get absolutely gunned at home plate. A terrible center. The Luis Rojas, a terrible center. That the time that Teoscar Hernandez got that ground ball in left field, so Giancarlo Stan was touching third base. And Luis Rojas, I'm going to send you. We know Giancarlo Stan's speed. Honestly, again, he was hustling. Giancarlo Stan was moving. I'm not saying he was not fast, but he was moving for Giancarlo Stan. This was him at his max speed. No chance. No chance. A good throw by Teo. I mean, a really great left fielder. And uh, the Yankees missed the opportunity. If they did not send John Carlos Sand, they would have been two outs. First and third uh, with, with Anthony Rizzo up to the plate. Um, and, and, yeah, so the Yankees missed the opportunity. Missed the opportunity right there. We take it to the top of the sixth inning. And the, the Dodgers take advantage of the New York Yankees with some small ball. Gavin Lux hit by pitch with two strikes. Who was that? Who, who, who hit him with two strikes? Was that Jake Cousins? I think it was Jake Cousins who hit him two strikes. In, in, a, in, a, in a good count, I think it was 0-2, um, ball missed low, and then he hits him in the back. Um, uh, so he gets on first base, wild pitch, allows him to move to second base, and then Keke Hernandez, RBI single. Keke Hernandez continues to be that guy. Shout out to Keke Hernandez. Man. Enjoy watching his game. He's such an incredible postseason player. Great hitter, lines went up the middle. Gavin Lux, an incredible throw by Aaron Judge at, uh, in center field. He was in – uh, uh, and, and, and he didn't, I mean, he really did not move. He didn't go. It was not shallow center field. That was a long throw and judge. I mean, no hesitation, bullets a home play, but Gavin Lux, his speed on display. That right there is two runs. If Giancarlo Stan scores right there and Gavin Lux get gun, gets gunned out right there, I mean, two runs, that is so massive. I mean, the Yankees lost by two runs. I, of course, that's that's not the reason the Yankees lost, but those are the types of plays that change games in this postseason, and and the Dodgers did it, and the Yankees, of course, did not. Um, great base running by the Dodgers. They really have a fast team. When you think about it. that's the thing, man. The Yankees, of course, um, have a have a really talented hitters, but man, look, Otani incredibly fast, Mookie Betts incredibly fast, Teoscar Hernandez can move, Freddie Freeman still can move. Um, Will Smith can move. Gavin Luck can move. Keegan Aaron Anderson. Tough, they're they're incredibly an athletic team. And then the Yankees. Stan can't run. Rizzo can't run. Trevino can't run. Juan Soto walk. Hey, let's go, baby. This is the time right here. Sixth inning. Um, I think they just yeah they just put in Bruce Dar Gratterall. Aaron Judge got a single off Bruce Dar Gratterall. Um, he's gonna ground it to a a forced out. Um, Bruce Dar Gratterall. Um, a, s a small, small ground ball right back to him. He's going to opt to try to go to second base, a really tough play for the pitcher. And we've seen it, uh, a missed throw in these sorts of situations all the time. Very tough play for a pitcher. And, and Tommy Edmond saves him at shortstop. A really, 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 really great play at shortstop. Tommy Edmond uh, is, of course, not a natural shortstop. Really him moving around second base, uh, outfield, third base. 
But man, what a what a great play. I mean, that ball was to the left. He had the momentum. He to be able to stay on the bag as well, catch that ball. Really impressive, massive play right there to make it two outs. And then Giancarlo Stan is gonna single um into center field. And then Alex Vesey is gonna come into the game to face Jazz Chisholm Jr. First and second, two outs. Um, I, I, in this at bat, I was like, Alex Vesey is going to throw 70 percentage fastballs. Jazz, let's sit fastball. And Alex Vesey actually went to, I think, three sliders in that at bat. Um, and he actually ended up getting him on a slider loan away, a ground out to, to Gavin Lux. So uh, we take it to the seventh inning. Anthony Volpe um, almost hit a home run, almost hit a home run. It was a, a fastball away. Um, who was in this game? Daniel Hudson, I think, was in this game at this point. Fastball away, Volpe, great swing. We see Volpe do this all the time. That pitch outside, a little bit late on it, line it down the right field line, and it's just going to tail um, to just, just, just foul off the top of the, the right field wall. The bottom of the eighth inning, guess what, guys? The Yankees put together another rally. Oh, Anthony Rizzo, incredible battle. Anthony Rizzo has had so many of these moments. I think in game one, Anthony Rizzo, hey, we battle, we put up great at-bats, and we work a walk. Austin Wells, what are we doing? We're not swinging at one pitch. Who was in this game at this point again? Was this Daniel Hudson again? No, this is Ryan Brazier. Ryan Brazier. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ryan Brazier's a dog. But, man, come on, Wells. Like, like pinch hit. Another fucking strikeout looking, man. Like, that's the worst thing to do as a baseball player. Strikeout looking. What are we doing? We have a bat in our hands, and we're not being aggressive. We're looking to walk. Terrible. Terrible. Follow that. Anthony Bonda comes in the game to face the left-hand hitter, Alex Verdugo. Four-pitch walk. A. Another rally. Now we got the top of the lineup up with, I think, one out, first and second. Gleyber Torres. I'm sorry. This is two outs. So there's two outs, first and second. Gleyber Torres up to the point. Incredible battle with Torres. He falls behind 0-2 um, because I think he was taking first pitches again. Bonda, four-pitch walk in the previous at-bat. Uh, Glaber being a more, more patient hitter. Two strikes. He goes in a battle mode. This is what Glaber Torres has done all postseason. Great battle. Fouls off a fastball. Leaves the slider. You're like, come on. He's fouling off that fastball high. He's taking that slider low. Glaber Torres is locked in. What is it? 1-2, two, 2-2. Two, two. And... Uh, Fast, fastball, 96 upstairs. Gleyber Torres checks away. He did not go. Umpire, what the fuck are we doing? That was an atrocious, atrocious call. So was this the reason the Yankees lost the game? No. But this is a massive momentum change. Massive momentum change. That was a, a terrible call. The umpire was a bad all night. There was a side, a call, I think, after that in the eighth inning. Tommy Kane was pitching uh, to Gavin Lux. A change of outside was not even close. The umpire called it. I'm not a guy who complains about umpires, but this umpire was very, very, very inconsistent all night. And that was a bad call. Bad call. So you're like, Gleyber Torres is really working here. And the umpire just ruined it like that. Ruined it like that. Fastball upstairs, Gleyber Torres. I recognize that. I take that pitch. Big situation. Umpire like, terrible. What are we doing? Um, Bottom of the ninth inning. Michael Kopech comes in this game for another A. Michael Kopech has five walks in this postseason for a reason. This guy does not throw strikes. Michael Kopech's good, but he does not throw strikes. In the ninth inning, of all the guys for the Dodgers put in, I like that Michael Kopech is in again. This is me talking as, as the Yankees fan. I'm sorry. I feel like in this video, we're talking more as a biased, biased Yankees fan. I, I really, of course, this channel, I really pride myself. I just like covering the MLB. This is not a Yankee channel, but... Of course, I'm passionate about, about the New York Yankees, and I love the Yankees. Um, so this is, uh, this, this is a frustrating game. So Michael Kopech um, is actually throwing strikes. First pitch, I think, was a ball, but then uh, he locked in. Uh, I forgot who was who was actually up. Was it was a Jazz. No, no, this was this was Volpe. I think Volpe led it off. Volpe did lead it off. Um, and so he was throwing strikes, and I think um, Austin Wells works a walk, and then Alex Verdugo. Two strike, two out. Wow, baby, Yankee Stadium. <laughs> we bring it back to the top of the lineup here. Two out. Glaber Torres, we battle. I forgot how even. I, it was a ground out, I think. And yeah, to Tommy Edmund up the middle. Nice fight. I actually thought Tommy Edmund might have been there. I was like, oh my God, Tommy Edmund. No, he didn't play. 
Dodgers get a win, man. What an impressive game for the LA Dodgers. Up 3 uh, 0. This series is over. This series is over. The LA Dodgers um, are really what, really, really one of the better teams that, that we've had the chance to watch uh, in the past five, 10 years. This is such a well constructed roster. And to see the stuff that they've uh, battled through this entire season, injury wise, and to see this team still look at this dominance, like they're dominant. I mean that Padre series A, we win that series. That was our that was our hardest foe. The Mets and the Yankees were significantly better, and we're playing also our best baseball with this pitching staff of, of Walker Bueller, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, and also Jack Flaherty coming through. Um this is a, a really impressive series. Um and and yeah, so even um if the Yankees do win tomorrow, uh Dodgers going out with a bullpen day, Yankees starting Luis Hill. I just don't think the Yankees are are going to win this series. This has been a great MLB season, really great MLB season. Um, and the Dodgers deserve to win the World Series. They deserve to win the World Series. They're the best team in the regular season. And and we're finally seeing potentially a one seed. Well, whoever wins the series is a one seed. But um, the Dodgers, the best team in baseball roster-wise to see, hey, we go out there, we sign uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, we sign Shohei Otani. We're investing the most money in MLB history into a team and and to see them actually come through and dominate, it's impressive. It's really impressive in baseball, which is such a hard postseason to actually win. It is really, really cool. So appreciate you guys so much for watching. Um, have a great day. We'll talk soon, and I'll see you guys soon.